Hi, my name is Zach Phillips with AtlasRFIDStore.com, and today we're going to learn about RFID antenna cables and how to purchase the best one for your application. RFID antenna cables connect the RFID reader and the RFID antenna and facilitate the transfer of energy between them. There are three important components that make up an antenna cable that are key to selecting the best cable for an RFID system. Length, insulation rating, and connectors. An antenna cable can be made in lengths up to 100 feet, but as a rule, you should choose the shortest length possible for your system. The problem with longer cables is the longer the cable, the farther the energy has to travel, which means more energy is lost between the reader and antenna. Here we have some examples of cables which vary in length. This is a six foot cable. This is a 20 foot cable. And this is a 40 foot cable. If you must have a longer cable, the best way to reduce energy loss is to purchase a cable with a higher insulation rating. The insulation rating is the amount of insulation the cable has in order to reduce energy loss. Antenna cables are energy conductors made up of a copper core insulated by both metal and rubber. The better insulated a cable is, the less energy loss during the process. Insulation rating is also directly related to the diameter of the cable, or its thickness. Typically, RFID antenna cables are available in three ratings, 195, 240, and 400. This is an example of a 195 series cable. This is an example of a 240 series cable. And this is an example of a 400 series cable. When you look at them together, you can clearly see the different thickness. The primary issue with a thicker, more insulated cable is that it's less pliable than a thinner cable, which can make it more difficult to deploy and use in tight spaces. The third component that makes up an antenna cable is the connectors at either end. The correct connectors must be used in order to connect the RFID reader and antenna. There are three common connector types for RFID antenna cables, RPTNC, SMA, and N-Type. Each of these types have two versions, male, sometimes called plug, and female, sometimes called jack. For example, if your reader has a RPTNC female connector, you should make sure that one end of your cable has a RPTNC male connector. If your antenna has a SMA female connector, then the other end of your cable should be a SMA male connector. Let's talk about the differences between an RPTNC, SMA, and N-type connectors, as well as the differences between male and female connectors. As you can see, the SMA connector is the smallest, about the size of a pencil eraser. An RPTNC connector is one of the most frequently used cable connectors in RFID, and in comparison to the other two, is a mid-size connector. An N-type connector is almost twice as big as an RPTNC connector and are the largest connectors commonly used in UHF RFID systems. With regard to male connectors versus female connectors, the determining factor between whether a connector is male or female is the location of the threading. If you take a close look at these connectors, you notice that one has threading on the outside and one has threading on the inside. A female connector, or jack, always has threading on the outside, while a male connector or plug always has threading on the inside. Another important part of choosing a connector is understanding whether the connector is normal or reverse polarity. RPTNC is one of the most frequently used connectors, and the RP in front of the TNC stands for reverse polarity. The normal polarity version of this connector is just called TNC, but this type is not frequently used with RFID applications. The key to determining whether the connector is normal or reverse polarity is the center pin. This is the center pin of an RFID connector. In a connector that is a normal polarity, like SMA, N-type, or TNC, 
the center pin will always be in the male connector. That means that that connector will have threading on the inside and a center pin. Here is an example of a normal polarity male connector. Here is an example of a normal polarity female connector. In a connector that is reverse polarity, the center pin will be in the female connector. That means that the connector will have threading on the outside and a center pin. Here's an example of a reverse polarity male connector. Here's an example of a reverse polarity female connector. While this is a lot of information to take into consideration, here are three rules to follow to ensure that you purchase the right connectors for an antenna cable. Similar types connect. For example, SMA connects to SMA and N-type connects to N-type. Similar polarities connect. For example, RPSMA connects to an RPSMA and RPTNC connects to an RPTNC. Opposite genders or threading types connect. For example, SMA male connects to an SMA female. RPTNC male connects to a RPTNC female. Thanks for watching this video on how to purchase an RFID antenna cable. For more information on radio frequency identification and how it is being used all over the world, check out our blog, our RFID resources page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions at all, please send us an email or give us a call.